Welcome to Agent Unstuck Calls, where we talk to real estate agents who are experiencing a challenge in their real estate career and they're looking for an alternative solution. Hi, I'm your host, Mike Cerrone with MastermindAgent.com, and I'm excited about this episode. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Thank you for joining me. And uh, how can I help you today? What is your challenge in real estate like a brainstorm? My challenge is... Oh, I have challenges, but my main challenge, I just recently started my own brokerage and I've been in the business 15 years, but just doing real estate is one thing, but running a business is another. And then when it's your business, then it's even more interesting. So my challenge is, has really been um, getting systems in place to hire an assistant, to hire agents. And it's like, okay, what do I do first? And so I think I'm stuck there because now I'm an agent, you know, and I need to be a business owner. And to get there, I need to modify what I'm doing now. And of course, in this market, it's been interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's a crazy market, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Yeah. Well, good. So thank you for, for sharing. And I'm, as you know, I like to ask a lot of questions. So we'll kind of open this up and try to get an understanding of what you're doing. So you've been in the business for 15 years as an agent. You got a wild hair and you decided to become a broker. Uh, how long ago did you decide to become a broker? In August. So it's been, what, about nine months or so? Okay. Yes. Good. And so you and have. And I felt that um, I, since I'm a business major, I could just, you know, put all that expertise to um, use since I've actually consulted on the side with helping people start their business. But it is just totally different when it comes to mine for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> right. That is crazy. It's just, it's like, now, how in the world can I not be prepared for my own, you know? <laughs> it's the shoemaker <laughs> problem, right? The shoemaker <laughs> always has the worst shoes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, good. So your background is you, you have a, a degree in business. You've consulted people before when they've done things like this or done things in business. You've been an agent yourself. Uh, tell me, uh, well, What's the dream of the brokerage? What is your vision for the brokerage? Let's start big picture. What, what do you want to happen with it? Well, I, I really want to stay on the administrative side with training. You know, I like that, that kind of stuff. I don't want to compete with my agents. Um, I could, you know, my sphere and my past clients are enough for me. Most of my business has come from either investors or um, referrals from past clients or repeat clients and um, my sphere. So I'm okay with that. You said you've been working on this since August. Uh, and so I assume that's when you got your license transferred over and you got the door open, so to speak. Uh, since then, What's happened? Have you brought in any agents? Is it still just you? Where are you at? Um, well, I, my plan has been to work on systems the first year and then closer to my year anniversary to start hiring. But it's, I don't know if I'll make it that long because it's just a lot. So it's like, do you hire the agents first? Do you hire the assistant first? You know, I'm just torn between the two and I've seen um, suggestions, you know, of both. So it's like, okay, what? 
Okay. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to throw stuff out just because I'm trying to help, right? So let's look what, what you need to do is you're looking at it from your perspective as the broker, right? And that makes sense because we're all, that's our way our eyes work. We're looking out, we're looking from ourselves out and you're thinking, what am I doing? You're, what am I admin doing? What, you know, I think what I want you to do is I want you to flip it around and I want you to stand in the shoes of an agent who's looking around to join a brokerage, right? They're looking at all the brokerage options out there and they look at your uh, brokerage, ABC brokerage, and they say, hmm, what is this? My question to you is, what do they see? What What is your brokerage stand for? Why would they want to join your brokerage? Right now, if you looked at it, you would say, hmm, I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> But She's what, not ready. But what do you want it to be? What do you want it to, what's the vision? What's the thing that you want it to look like in a year or five years or 10 years out? You need to have a vision of what that thing looks like from their perspective. And I'm telling you, that's going to help answer all these other questions. You got to know what you're building, right? You can't just uh, pour some water in the ground and a house pops up, right? You got to have plans, blueprints. You got to have a vision of what it, it's going to look like it's going to be a one-story house, a two-story house, a, a, a split level, a, how big, how many square feet, does what kind of roof line. You know, you've got to have a vision for what this thing looks like before you can start building it. And so you got to do that with this company, too. you got to look at it from the front of it. What is this thing going to be when it, it's done? Uh, and, and it's where I want it to be. So that's what I'm challenging you to do right now is. What do you want this thing to look like from someone else's perspective? They look at this business and go, oh, that's what that business does. What's the answer? The answer is, had when I started out, had someone helped me in this business holistically, not just selling houses, not just listing houses, you know, not, you know, and having to sacrifice something for to do that, I would do that. You know, I would, that's what I would want. How to have a real estate career and enjoy my family and have time for myself. Had someone taught me how to do that. And I've learned along the way but it's now, you know, just trying to put it all together now is, I won't say the challenge, but, you know, it's been the, the goal for me. All right. So what I'm hearing is you want to create a space where agents have uh, a work-life balance. It's not just the business. It's how the business fits with your life so that you can balance those two objectives of earning income and spending time with your family uh, or whatever your, your desires are. Is that where you're kind of going? Yes. And so the name of the company is Balance Real Estate? <laughs> <laughs> no, but... That's, you see, that's but you see where point. I kind of went with that? Yeah. Because... Balanced real estate, people go, why did you call it that? So, well, because I want to create this holistic world. You could call it holistic real estate, right? Because yeah. immediately people understand, oh, that's the vision. You're trying to create this thing where everybody works together. Um, you, you get what, how I did that? Okay. Yes. I, I just took the words from you and I kind of tried to build off of it. And so you've got to have a little brainstorming with that and play it out a little more. So Tell me more about what holistic means to you. Try to get another level deeper. Well, what that means to me, I mean, I know you've been in the business for a long time and burnout is real. You know, and what I've seen lately are a lot of agents running into real estate, you know, jumping into real estate, you know, with the wrong mindset of money, 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 money. And I'm the type of person that wants to help. You know, I, I want to be of service, but I also don't want to lose my family or my sanity in the process. So, you know, just 
kind of edu it's just a I, I guess a holistic educational process you know of course you need to know how to sell you need to know how to be a buyer's agent you know you might need to you know depending on which focus that an agent wants or or what my organization needs i would want to help them with their focus but not just get so consumed with it that they're selfish you know that is it's just totally money driven because you know once you learn to be of service the money always comes you know you you always the money is always there, you know, and, and with the right systems in place, the right atmosphere, the right training, the right support, then you can, you know, have more of better agents than the ones that are jumping in because the market's hot. You know, the market is always hot for someone that knows their passion in the business. So you're going in, go in the right direction. I think you're, you're going into what I would define as culture, the culture of the business. That's what you want to define. And uh, the systems can help with that a little bit. The big one is going to be the screening of people as they're coming in. That's one word to use or the magnet or the attractor. And that's why it's super important for you to set up maybe a mission statement. Okay so that you can get real clear on what you want and what you're creating and that you could display that to anybody who comes in. You wanna make it ingrained in the business so they understand what you're doing and what you wanna create there. So you repel people who are only coming for fast bucks. Uh, and you can even say that in your mission statement. I'm not, I do not want fast buck artists here, however you wanna define it. Uh, I'm looking for people who want to be of service to their community and to their customers and to help uh, move them along in the right uh, process to get our, to have to hold the client's interests higher than our own, right? A fiduciary duty, but to define that more than the word fiduciary, explain it and express it. And that should become part of your hiring process. In other words, you're not going to be a broker who just puts a mirror in front of an agent and if they fog it up, hey, you're hired, right? Yeah, right. Uh, you're going to be someone who says, look, we're going to have seven interviews before you get in here because I need to make sure I know who you are. I want some references. Uh, I, I want, I'm building something special here. It's not like all the other places, right? Right. Okay. And so you have got to keep knocking these ideas around with someone like we're doing now got to pick your best friend in real estate or somebody your spouse whoever somebody one of your family members somebody that you can bounce ideas off of to try to get this thing built in your head space and then on some paper and you can define it and explain it to others of what you want to build out and so in a way it's pretty good you haven't tried to hire anybody yet because you don't have that defined and uh, these, that may be what's actually holding you back, okay? You know there's an emotional piece to this that you don't feel correct with yet. And that's holding you back from doing the logical, easy stuff, which is setting up systems. Because you're a business person, you know how to set up the systems. But you're, you're stopping yourself from doing that because your heart's telling you, I don't know what the thing is yet i don't know the vision i i don't want to attract the wrong people i don't want to make this thing wrong well that's fine now you know what to do you got to go into the heart and the dream and the vision of what this thing's going to be uh so that you know what it is you can define it to others you can be the true leader right you got to be the leader saying this is what i believe in if you believe like me, let's move forward together. And if you don't, you need to go that direction. There's a lot of people that aren't like me over there. But if you're like me and you want to go forward, let's do this thing. And yeah, people I don't want leaders. just bodies. What's that? I don't want to just have bodies. Right. Yeah, I mean, you can. There's a lot of those body shops, right? They, they, they just take as many people in. 
Uh, but if you don't want that, you have to define it because if you don't define it, you're going to get anything, right? If you if you just drop your your boat in the ocean with no sail, you're going yeah. wherever the ocean pushes you. Yeah. Right. But if you get a sail and you then you can start going the direction you want. Well, same idea here. You got to define this vision. I this is easy. I you have to work on your vision of what this thing looks like the people that are there. So don't think system wise, think people, what kind of people are there? What are their values? That's another good word for you right there. What are their values, the mission statement, the value statement, the principles of the people that you want to work for you. Uh, you should be really slow to hire, to bring people in and fast to fire. If somebody comes in and they're not meeting these standards. I don't care if they're selling a hundred million dollars uh, in real estate a year, you got to let them go. You have to set those principles and expectations up front. And what that's going to do again, is it's going to become the magnet and a, and a retra- uh, repellent. So the magnet is going to pull in the people that you're looking for. Once you've defined it and tell everybody that's what you want. And the repellent is going to push away all those people you don't want after you define who they are. You got to make that clear. You got to put it down on paper, uh, and you got to then express that in these, any the advertisements and promotions you do uh, when you're meeting people as they come into the office for an interview. You know, wherever you're meeting them, you've got to express to them this vision. Otherwise, they they don't know what they're joining, and they won't. Then all you've got left is commission split, and if you go down a commission split, you're losing because there's no way you can beat everybody else on commission split. Somebody will always come in and beat you and do a better split than whatever you've got. You've got to create that culture, the reason for being there. Um, and you're creating a community. I would use that word. So words I'm thinking of are community, culture, um, values, uh, a mission statement, a mission I think these are the things that you you need to work on. How does that sound to you? It sounds it sounds good, and just hearing you say it, it's not that I didn't know, but just hearing you say it and putting it into words, I guess, helps a lot. Isn't that the way it always is? I mean, you've got a <laughs> billion different thoughts running around in our head. It's just we don't know which one to focus on. That's why you. It's good to get a second pair of eyes sometimes or a second set of ears to listen and kind of hash. That's why I was talking about get a friend and hash these ideas out because it's really good to do, by the way, because you're going to find take a position and let them take a position and battle it out. You got to be friends first, right? You battle it out. Yeah, definitely. And you think about it later, go, wow, okay, that point made sense. That one didn't. This is what I want. This is what I don't want. You may end up making a, a core value, so your top five values that you want from people when they come in, right? Honest, ethical, you know, whatever the list is. Um, balance, you talked about balance, holistic. You mentioned holistic at the very beginning. That's probably a word I'd want you to start with, right? That should be in the subtitle right under the name of the company. If the company's not holistic real estate, then it should be Blank real estate, the holistic company, or something like that, right? Yeah, because it's definitely not holistic. <laughs> it's totally different from that. Well, I'm just, you know, I understand. Yeah, I know what you're saying. It, but you yeah. understand where I'm going. And by the way, you can change the name. Names are very important. It it establishes the 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 what people expect. You can do generic names that mean nothing, and then you define what that means, or you can be very specific. Like if I told you instant real estate, what would you think? Quick. Fast. Exactly. Right. I mean, it tells you they they must be doing things quick over there. Right. So these words can be powerful and they, uh, and so that may be something you play with and you may decide to change the name. I changed the name of my brokerage multiple times based on different things that were going on and how I wanted to reposition us in the market. So you can do that. I never thought about that. that. I never really thought about that. It's early days. You haven't created a bunch of signage yet, I assume, or po- uh, business cards. You have no agents to worry about and them and all their resources. So you just be open-minded to this idea that you're going to create this bigger picture. And then all, I'm telling you, you started with systems. That's all going to play out. 
once you've established this, the rest is going to flow much easier. Okay. And it's amazing. I can help everybody else. But when it, it came to me, I was like, why am I feeling stuck? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we're chatting. Maybe you need to get a mirror and you can look at the mirror like you're talking to yourself. I don't, I'm teasing, but you know, somehow you're going to have to play the, the angel and the devil on your shoulders or something where you, you get yourself in a dialogue, but it's going to be easier if you bounce it off somebody that you trust. Um, so well, I'm, I'm excited for you. I think you, you get, you're going down this path and you have something, something pushed you to this path. I think you need to find out what that is, reach down into your soul and your heart and feel what that is. Maybe you're going to create something really special. It hasn't been out there yet. There hasn't been out there in the form that you're using. Possibly I, because that's why I'm here, you know, in my own, because I just didn't see in larger companies that I've been with, you know, it's like, okay, I can, I can get that. I can get that. You know, it's easy to find a suite with flyers and um, postcards and, you know, you can buy all of that on your own, you know? So I said, I would take the, the uh, franchise fee and just put it back into my business. There you go. Um, keep in mind that once you get that vision, you can do what you just did, which is you can juxtapose it to whatever you saw out there. Say, you know, don't name companies, but you say, you know, there are companies out there that do blank. And we yeah. don't do that here. We do blank the blank. Yeah. <laughs> they do X and we do Y. They do A and we do B. Uh, so you start to sell off of them, if you will, to help people define in their mind what you are. So that's another way to do it. And, but that's kind of the next step. First, you have to define yes. what you are. Yes. Okay. But they may, in fact, actually help you define your vision to say what you're not. I am not this. I'm not that. I don't want to be this or that. Uh, but I do want to be this new thing. You got to define the new thing. You got to, I think you should take that word holistic and open that up a little bit. Expand it. Is. All right. Well, uh, I've got an assignment for you. I give everybody an assignment at the end of our calls. Do you have something okay. right? I do. Yeah. Yours is going to be a fun one. So your assignment is to write out your vision. Um, you know what? I'm going to make this real clear. Write out a mission statement. A mission statement. And that's something that you would present to the world to show what your values are. And it's not you personally anymore, it's your company. So it's to show what the company's values are, uh, what their goal is or their drive is to, to create or do. It's their purpose. That's a good word too. It's the purpose of this business. Um, and that might be another good word for you to focus on. So words I've got you to focus on are purpose, uh, community, culture, values, and of course this mission. But I'd like you to write out a mission statement for your business. Uh, and usually they're short. They're usually only uh, a paragraph or two, maybe half a page, a page at the most, because they have to be simple and succinct. So someone can read it and go, that's what this business does. I don't want to, I guess, in between my generation and the millennials and the, what, the Z or whatever we're on now, I don't want to get, I don't want to miss them. So it's, you know, I'm, I've done research on, you know, generations, a couple generations before me and, you know, the newer generation, the ones that are in the workforce to see how we can all work together. Good. So bring that in, right? So you could become inclusive in, in that yes. regard. But I want I do want to emphasize that you're a small player. You're you're a one person shop at this point. And to win as a small player, you got a niche. Okay. And niching just means you've narrowed the field of view. And so 
what you want to do is niche into something. In this case, I think you're niching into the culture of the company from what you've told me so far, right? Yes. And you're not trying to be all things to all people. Do not do that. You avoid that at all costs because that's going to not win. You, you got to narrow the focus real tight into this is what we do here. We don't do anything else. And what's going to happen, I think, is you're going to draw people from all those different groups and all different ages and all different everythings because it's not, you know, what we look like. It's what we feel like on the inside. Or do we have these ethics and these qualities and so forth? And that's what you're going to draw. So you're trying to pull on someone's heartstrings into your business, right? Yeah, sometimes I think I just waited a little late to start a company. How old are you? <laughs> I'm almost, I'm over 50. You're old, you're too old, forget it, you can't do it. Is that what you want to hear, really? <laughs> Is that really what you wanted to hear? No way. No. Uh, come on. You have all that life experience now that you can bring to the table. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, and even though America is not as as much as the other parts of the world, as far as looking up to our elders, we still look up to our elders. We respect people that have knowledge and um, uh, and things beyond what we have. It may not be just knowledge, but life experience, uh, emotional experience, all these things that are harder to define. And that's what you need to start defining. And think about becoming a magnet. How can I track the right people to me um, that I want to be around, right? That I want this, I want to be this core. How can I make this really cool group of people that work with me because we all share the same values? And then that's going to attract even more people like that. Yes. So you need to define that. So that's your assignment is write out that mission statement. While you're doing that, you're thinking of this vision for what this company is going to become. Uh, as far as an attractor and a repeller, think in both forms. When could you get this statement done? It wouldn't, I would say it shouldn't take more than a couple of days, I would think. If I just sat and used my goof off time. And <laughs> right. So you tell me a deadline. Your goal is to give me a deadline. Today is Wednesday. Uh, let's say Friday, no later than Monday. Okay, you pick the day, Friday or Monday? Monday. Monday what time? By noon. Monday, 12 noon, awesome. So you set your deadline, and now the last part is accountability. When you get it done, I want you to email me telling me you got it done. That's okay. your accountability, okay? Okay. We all work better under a deadline and a little bit of pressure that we put on ourselves, and it's helpful to have somebody with you. And so I'm with you on that one, and we got yourself a deadline. So go ahead. That's your assignment. Again, mission statement for this vision of the company. You're going to send it over to me Monday, 12 noon. Uh, you, you just have to send me, tell me that you got it done. If you want, you can also send me the mission statement itself. But I want you to have that accountability uh, piece. Was this helpful? Very. Oh, good. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, that's it for Agent Unstuck Calls. It was a lot of fun today. If you liked what you heard, go ahead and click that like button. And if you want to hear more calls like this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you know exactly when the next episode is coming out. And if you have any thoughts about what you heard today and you'd like to relay that to everyone else, go ahead and put that down in the comment section so people can talk about it. And finally, if you're stuck in your real estate career, you're a veteran who's having some challenges and you can't figure out how to get to that next step, go ahead and schedule yourself an unstuck call. Just go to agentunstuckcall.com. That's agentunstuckcall.com. And let's get you scheduled in. You'll go in there, you'll fill out a quick survey, you'll find a time that works for you, and we'll get on a call just like this and see if we can't get you some answers. All right, this has been a lot of fun. I'm your host, Mike Cerrone with Mastermind Agent. And again, thank you for joining us on Agent Unstuck Calls. Take care.